What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of my new career mode. This is episode number two and we started today's episode off by seeing that Barcelona have come in for us for our young attacking midfielder Verdi. Now we recalled this guy from Empoli and uh, paid a small fee for him and Barcelona want to take him for five million pounds. I asked for nine million pounds and we'll wait and see what they say because our 22 year old is 71 overall. Not a bad start there for his uh, first preseason friend. He wants a penalty in the game against Villarreal in that preseason friendly in the last uh, last episode. But to be honest, if we can get £9 million pounds for the guy, I'll probably take it. Because I don't know what his potential is, but I can't imagine it's too high. And uh, if that means we can invest the money we'll get for him in other areas in the squad, I'll take it. But uh, our first signing of the series is this guy. Nicola Muru has come in for £2.5 million, pounds, plus that random 30-odd-year-old we had. And I'm okay with that. Again, it may seem like an overspend right to begin with, and it probably is in all fairness. But you've got to remember, these are the type of players who hopefully have the potential to not only just match that valuation or match the transfer fee you pay for them, sorry, but... You you know, far exceed that, you know, so 2.5 million pounds, look at that as an investment, and look at all the transfers we'll be doing as investments, because I don't imagine there'll be too many players we'll be looking for in the first few transfer windows that are really good starting overalls, most of the players most likely are going to be young, you know, 23 and under players who we want to develop for the future, so Muru becomes our first signing of the new series, we also put a new bid for Daniela Baselli of Atalanta as well, we'll wait and see what Atalanta say for this bid, we put in 6 million pounds for the guy, and again, it's one of those players, and it's one of those transfer fees, which is an overspend I totally know that but um, he, he probably will be worth more than that in the future if he does hopefully develop the way we'll be looking for him to do so and also Sampdoria uh, Roberto Soriano we put in a bit of five million pounds and we'll wait and see what they say again just, just another player who I think could be good for the future and get straight into the first team and we also saw that Barcelona matched our £9 million asking price for Simon Verdi. So he looks like he's on his way to Spain, which to me is okay because, you know, I wasn't really too sure about that because obviously Verdi does look like a really decent player, but I'm not too sure what his potential is. So he's going to go to Barcelona for £9 million. And again, maybe I've done a bad deal there. Maybe he's got really good potential. I'm not too sure though. But even so, for £9 million, I thought that was a pretty decent deal considering his starting valuation. And there you go. We also put in uh, in quite Inquiries for Poloski and also Simon Zaza as well. Two Italian strikers there I think could be good to come into the first team and develop for us because we do have some decent attacking players in this Torino side already. Obviously, I mentioned uh, Quagliarella who scored in the first preseason friendly and Amari as well. Not to mention Martinez, the uh, young centre forward. South American forward has pretty decent potential, I hope. And also Barreto's not a bad starting overall either. But even so, he sold Maxi Lopez and I wouldn't uh, wouldn't mind signing a new striker. Uh, Poloski, uh, Kiev Verona want £10.5 million. Sassuolo wants 16 million pounds for Zaza so we put in a bid for a Pulaski of Kievo Verona and we'll wait and see what they say wasn't going to give them the 10.5 million pounds they wanted I did say we'll give you 5.5 million pounds though and we'll wait and see what they say 75 overall 24 years old probably still has a couple of more ratings to grow as well I wouldn't mind paying that if he gets us like 15 goals a season you know that could be a pretty decent investment for us but uh, we'll wait and see but also Hellas Verona put in a bid for uh, Cesar Bovo our centre back here 31 years old 73 overall we said matches valuation at 1.4 million pounds and you can take him so I don't think he's got much of a future here and uh, as you'll see they do come back and match that in just a moment's time but Verdi has indeed gone to Barcelona for nine million pounds so through that one sale on its own we've already got more of a budget than we started off with so Verdi does leave and you know to be honest I'm not really too sure how to feel about it because I'm sort of I'm sort of half and half I guess the jury's out really I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't have done that maybe we should have kept him and tried to give him some game time see if we develop into a decent player but personally speaking nine million pounds for a player that was only valued at 1.5 million I think it was 22 years old he was I mean I just couldn't see him really becoming like you know the, the next big attacking midfielder in Italy so he's gone to Barcelona and will use the money to try and invest it in uh, in uh, more areas in the squad uh, for players that could go straight into the first team including this guy Alberto Poloski put a new bid of 6.25 million pounds and we'll wait and see what Kiev and Verona say and also River did indeed accept the bid of 7 million pounds for Balanta now Verdi has gone we got the money to do this so Balanta looks Looks like he's on his way to Torino for £7 million. It is expensive. And again, you're probably sitting there thinking, that's way over his valuation, man. Seriously. But in this year's FIFA, for those young players, you typically do have to spend about three to four times, the, uh, sorry, two to three, sometimes even four times the valuation in order to get hold of them. But uh, still, also, uh, Kiev Verona accepted a bid of £6.25 million for Poloski. So we'd offer him a contract as well and we'll wait and see what he says. And also, Sampdoria said the bid for Roberto Soriano was not good enough. So I think that deal is probably going to end there. And also, Balanta does become our second signing of the series as well. 
Obviously, a football manager, he's an absolute god. So hopefully, he's the same in FIFA. Really, really decent young centre-back. And uh, yeah, is over his valuation by quite a few mil. I know that, but I hope he'll turn out to be a good investment for us. But also, it's good timing as well because Camille Glick comes to us. And our captain has put in a transfer request to the club and says he spent a lot of time considering his future. And although the timing is bad, he needs a change of scenery and wants a move immediately. So Camille Glick, our top-rated player in terms of the overall, our captain here at Torino, is about to abandon us and you know I just I couldn't believe it as Balanti you can see his stats there I couldn't believe it because it's like this Torino squad is you know in a, in, in a transition phase you know new manager getting loads of new players into the club as well this guy is our captain and supposed to stay with us and lead us you know through this transition but now he's requested a transfer and wants to leave and you know sometimes I'll say to the player no I'm not going to let you go but with Glick I thought do you know what you request a transfer during this you know during this phase where we're transitioning into a new team you're our captain we have no plans to change that you can go I did my best David Brent impression and said there's the door you can leave the club and Chelsea matched a 21 million pound counter offer I know Glick is our best player as Pulaski comes out becomes our third signing for 6.25 million pounds I know Glick is our best player in the overall I know he's our captain but I'm sorry I'm not going to keep a player here if he wants to leave if he wants to leave this club if he has in a transfer request you can go you can leave my club and I don't care whether you're captain best player in the team or best player in the world you can get out on my side because I want players here that actually want to play for the club, fight through this transition phase and become part of this Torino future. So Glick is going to go to Chelsea for £21 million because Bayern Munich and Arsenal would not match the £21 million I was asking for. So the Polish centre-half is going to be on his way to Stamford Bridge. And, you know, I'm just going to say to the guy, like, seriously, in a few years' time, when we're hopefully winning Serie A titles and challenging for the Champions League as well, hopefully you'll be regretting your move to Stamford Bridge. But we'll have to wait and see. He does end up going to Chelsea for £21 million, as so you'll see in this email here as uh, Kiev Verona putting a bid for Alexander Farnerud, the Swedish midfielder and we asked him uh, we asked him to match his valuation as you can see Glick has left the club for 21 million pounds and yeah he's gone and that's totally fine with me because whether he's our best player in the overall or not if he doesn't want to stay here if he doesn't want to keep that captain's armband and show loyalty to this club you can go and we'll try and get better players for the future and you will not be part of this Torino future anymore so he's gone and I'm totally fine with that best player in the overall or not I don't really care he's gone now and uh, we'll start looking for a new captain in the team internally and also bringing in new players as well. So we put in a bid for Florenzi too and also this guy Bernadeschi. We inquired about this guy. He's showing a great potential tag and I went to see what Fiorentina said. They said we would take 500 grand for him so I decided to put in a bid of 500 grand because that for me, even though I don't have, even though I don't have his overall, he's got to show a great potential tag so I'm sure it'll be worth more than that in the future so that's totally fine with me. And also as well you can see here, Poloski, uh, sorry, uh, Farnerud uh, has uh, is going to Kiev Verona for £1.8 million as they match that. So Poloski came in he was our third signing as well I think I might have forgot to show his uh, for, forgot to have uh, shown his stats but you'll see it uh, soon enough anyway but um, in the next episode in the squad report so sorry about that regardless but also as well uh, Fiorentina and Roma both accepted our bids for Bernadoshi and also Florenzi as well so you offer them contracts and we'll wait and see whether these players can come to the club Farnerud does indeed go to Kiev Verona for 1.8 million pounds that's totally fine with me and there you go and as you can see Bernard uh, I can't pronounce this guy's name Bernadeschi is that how you pronounce that again I will pronounce some of these names wrong, so please forgive me. But uh, Bernadeschi of Fion uh, Fiorentina is coming into the club for 500 grand, and Florenzi also joins for £7 million. He's 77 overall, 23 years old. I've had this guy in career mode before, and he was really good. And what I really like about the guy as well is he's really, really versatile. He's listed as a right wing, but with those stats, he could play anywhere. He's got a high, high work rate as well, which I love, and really high stamina. He could play anywhere. And that's, that's one of the things I love about some players in your squad when they're utility men, they can play all across the you know the defense and midfield and even some players in the attack I just I love players that are capable of doing that because even Florenzi like if we wanted to we could put him a fullback he's got right back listed in his positions and he'd probably do a solid job for us but uh, still put a new bid for Baselli as well of Atalanta that deal is not dead in the water until I say so and also Bjorn Engels as well showing great potential young Belgian center half heard a lot of good things about this guy six foot four that's what I really like about the guy very commanding physical presence because in this side we don't have too many good defenders with uh, height you know, a lot of our defense is, uh, you know, relatively not small, but uh, not as tall as I like them. I like my defenders to be at least six foot. Balanza's is coming; he's only five foot eleven. But uh, Engels is six foot four, so we can have, if we can have a commanding presence in the air, this guy could be a really good player. Maybe not as tall and as commanding as Yannick Vestergaard I had at West Bromwich Albion, but uh, even so, he could still be a pretty decent player. Atalanta accepted a seven million pound bid for Baselli, those who do finally get to offer the twenty-two year old a contract. Again, just another player who I think could be really, really good in the centre of the park, especially if I do go over four-four-two 
through Diamond Central. He could be really, really good as a holding midfielder or in one of the CMs just to spread the ball around and pass the ball and retain possession for us quite nicely. Also, Engels is going to join the club as well for £2 million pounds plus Moretti. I'm totally fine with that. And also, Baselli comes in for £7 million pounds as well. So, two new signings here. The rebuild has begun and it's begun with many, many signings in this episode. Loads of players have come in. Baselli comes in here as well. You can see his stats look very, very nice indeed. And also as well, the... Um the young centre-back we signed, Bjorn Engels, the Belgian centre-half, looks really, really decent as a starting 19-year-old at 72 overall. So loads and loads of players coming in in this episode. Two big departures in Verdi and uh, also, of course, the main headline one, Glick, as well the skipper. But to be honest, we may have spent a lot of our budget on young players who have a lot of uh, a lot to prove, but this could be a risky strategy. I know this could be a pretty risky strategy, signing these players who don't have the best overalls to begin with, hoping that they'll develop for the future, especially when you consider the problems that a lot of people have with potential and players not growing in this year's career mode but I'm I'm hopeful I'm hopeful I'm putting I'm putting a lot of pressure on these young players to come in be part of this Torino squad make this squad really really youthful but I think it will pay dividends in years to come again maybe it'll backfire and none of these players will grow and they'll all end up being white elephants for us but personally speaking I think they're going to do really well Gabby Adini becomes the latest signing for five million pounds plus Gazi 77 overall 22 year old attacking midfielder looks really really decent as well and this guy looks like he is the final uh, piece in the jigsaw puzzle because we now have a really good attacking midfielder to support the two strikers in Poloski and also um, uh, Qualiarella as well and the first game of the new season is against Inter Milan here as you can see by the team six new signings coming into this uh, first 11 to make their debuts loads and loads of new players as you can see by the formation again it is a 4-4-2 diamond central I have made Maximovic captain since uh, Glick has gone maybe I'll change that during the season but for the time being I'm going to give it to the Serbian centre half and see how he does and he will come up against the Serbian centre-half himself in the Manja Vidic and his Inter Milan side for the first game of the new season. Hoping to get ourselves a win in the opening game, but personally speaking, just making sure we avoid a defeat was the most important thing for us. Not getting off to a loss would be really crucial for us. And the first chance did fall to us. Florenzi's strike was well saved by Handanovic and Inter Milan turned it behind for a corner. And in the 23rd minute, we go for on the break here. Qualiarella turns his man, rides two different slide challenges, then takes the ball around Santon and shoots. It's a good save by Handanovic, but it is a goal on his debut for Albert. Alberto Poloski. He's come in from Kiev of Verona for £6.25 million. And I hope this guy is going to get us 10 to 15 plus goals a season. If we can get, let's say we get 12, 13 goals out of this guy in his debut season, that'll be a good investment of £6.25 million. 75 overall rated striker. May not be too great, I know that, but if he can score the goals with an 82 finishing stat, then £6.25 million could be a really sound investment for the future, especially when you consider the fact he's still only 24 years old and has a few years left in him before he starts to decrease so it's a simple finish for Poloski yes I know but he's making his debut it's great to see him get off to a good start Torino 1 Inter Milan 0 Poloski with the opening goal of the game and the season and in the second half right from kickoff here we just pass the ball uh, around basically trying to retain possession for a bit with Torino playing a 4-4-2 diamond central that will be a big focus for us you know trying to retain possession and make sure we don't get the ball away too much trying to win the possession of war will be quite key and after some nice passing Bruno Perez gets on the ball plays a brilliant ball inside and Poloski wins the header puts it past Handanovic and gets his second goal on his debut to make it Torino 2 into Milan 0. So another goal for our new number 9. Really nice team goal as well. Worked the ball around really nicely. I think there was like 9 players that got on the ball before the, uh, the ball was put in the back of the, net, uh, back of the net there. Poloski with the header. Puts it past Handanovic. You really should have done better. Hesitated. You just can't do that. Poloski wins the header and makes it Torino 2 into Milan 0. So two goals up in this game and already looking really strong in our first competitive game with the new club. Inter Milan had a good chance here in the 61st minute as we gave the ball away. Zerdin Shakiri cuts inside and the former Bayern Munich man finds Gary Medel. The Chilean plays it back to the Swiss winger. Inside towards Palacio. He finds Freddy Guari and inside towards Icardi and his strike goes just wide of the post and behind for a goal kick. And it was how the game would finish as well. Not too much action happened in the whole game to be honest but we did come through with the win and winning in our first Serie A game is absolutely fantastic. Really Really solid defensive effort as well. Didn't really get breached too many times at the back. Good striker performance from Poloski as well. He looked really good in his debut. And the whole team, to be honest, played really, really well. So great to win on our opening game of the new season. And I'm really, really pleased with that. And that does any episode, guys. So thank you very much for watching the video. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed today's episode of Career Mode, then please do leave a like. And I'll see you for episode number three very soon.